Hey, what's up, y'all? I just took a break from painting. Come kick it with y'all, man. <laughs> Let's talk to my man, Big Snoop from South Philly. Just came home. Been down for a long time, man. You know, that was good news. Whatever. It put me in good spirits. But today, I was going to talk to y'all about a topic I never talk about. You know I mean, because it's just something that's, you know, personal. But this year, I make 21 years. So, you know. But the day I got shot nine times, man. June the 27th, 1997. And the thing I remember the most is that I had plans for that day, you know? And it made me think about all the dudes that had plans from Baltimore, from Washington, D.C., California, that left out their house and never made it back home. You know what I mean? So just think about that. Just think about when you leave out your house that you might not make it back. See, if we go to Magali, take it for granted that we're going to make it back home, right? I remember what I put on. I had just brought some white night. Because mind you, I just got out of the Army. So I had, you know, the Army was paying me, I think, $1,200 a month. You know what I mean? Then you get a $5,000 bonus for your age, your sign. I had like $12,000, which ain't a lot of money, but at the time for me, it was like, I got $12,000 in the bank. I never even had, you know, but the army set the bank stuff up for you, whatever, but I had a daughter that just was born. I mean, but you know, I still was looked at as a hooligan, I mean, because of my past. But I looked at myself as a reformed man, you know what I mean? So the way I saw myself in the way, my neighborhood, the hood I was at, saw me was two different ways, you know what I mean? Anyway, I see a crap game. It's my it's daytime, it's like two, two and a half, no, sunny, kids playing, it's summertime, it's, you know, it's like 20 niggas at the crap game, it should pop in. You get down to me and boy named O, shout out to O too, so O. So, you know, I beat O, but I'm on like seven grand, like, I mean, like, so I walk two blocks down to go to get, a, uh, I think, an iced tea. And, pop, 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 pop. I was, was, my foot was so close to me, like, I couldn't run, so, you know, I just went to him, like, you mean, try to get that shit from me, whatever. You know what I mean, and, you know, cause I, my whole, my whole thing was, I ain't want to run and get hit in my back and be paralyzed, man. That's one of my fears as a young boy. You know what I mean, so I was ready to die, but died you know I mean, at the time. Anyway, try to get the gun. It's like you need to get that won't run out of bullets. It then, I know, I don't know, you know, most of y'all probably never been shot, but the sound of it when it's close to you, when it's hitting you, the sound more frightening than actually getting hit. You know what I mean? So anyway, I get hit, 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 hit. I'm still standing up though. I don't fall. But bull ran off, seen bull jumping when he jumped in, whatever. You know what I mean? And uh, I tried to walk away. So I tried to walk away, like, uh, and I just, like, I didn't black out, but I just fell. I just, no, and just bust my chin open, broke my tooth, you know what I mean? Then I just started getting cold. But then I ain't feel no pain. But then it was like, I felt peace, like, man, I'm just ready to just go to sleep, man. Was, but I was salty. It was like, I wasn't even mad, I was just salty, like, damn, I'm about to die. Like, I feel like I had more stuff to do, you know what I mean? It was like a salty joint. Like, well, it wasn't even like a panicking, like, oh my God, my dad. It was like calm. It was like, I was, it was like, man, damn, 18, damn. You know what I mean? Because when I, you know, I had on a white t-shirt, white shorts. And I had on a mosquito shirt, but it was open. So, you know, when I look down, I could see the bullet holes, and I could see, you know, the blood and all that. So, me thinking I was going to survive wasn't even in it. I just knew I wasn't going to survive because I seen, you know, I had bullets in my legs, my arm, my elbow shot, my hand, my arm backwards. Man, then I got blood in my face, I got uh, grazed. But I didn't know if I was hit where, you know, I was hit so many places, you know. So, I was trying to go to sleep. I had a homie named, I called him Russell Simmons. He kept smacking me. Psh, psh, psh. Oh, wait, st stay woke, man, stay woke, stay woke, whatever. I like, yo, stop smacking me. But let me tell y'all something, man. It ain't funny, but it is now that it's, you know, it's been a long time. I remember seeing, you know how people say they see white lights and all that. I ain't seen none of that. I seen, I did see a, a baby crying. When I, you know, every time I doze off, I seen a baby crying, like a little baby crying. I don't know what that was about, but while I'm, you know, while I'm woke, a black Mercedes Benz ride past. Like, and if y'all young, y'all might don't know, but the 500 and the 600 coupe, like that's coupes back in like, you know, 97, they're exactly the same. The only difference was the 600s had a V12 by the back window. So the boy, whoever this boy was, he had the V12, 600 rode past, and for that split second, my drum on the ground about to die. I looked at it and said, you on hot, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I remember that I'm like, yo, the fuck? like, but it's like an automatic thing. But you know, it's like just a quick split second. Like, I mean, that would have been one of my last memories. Like, you know what I mean, so uh, ambulance never come. The 70, 80 people around me. You know what I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, it's the project. I'm done practicing. What's really, you know what I mean, whatever. You know, like, the cops came. Like, Who did it? Woo, woo, woo. You know, I'm, you all know. Come on, man. I knew the rules even then. But uh, lady cop was crying. She just was crying. She seen me how bad I was. She was just was crying. Like, I mean, so you know, he put me in a paddy wagon, and I was woke for about two blocks. And I, just, I woke up three days later, and I forgot what happened. 
that's the crazy part. Like, it took me like a few hours. Do you remember? Because I had tubes in my throat and all that. You know I mean, so when I woke up. Uh, when I woke up, though, that's the crazy. Part. When I woke up, I had it. You know, like you have a curtain. I had the doctors behind the curtain talking about you know cutting my arm off because I got hit like three times in one of the arm. My elbow got hit off, knocked off. My artery got you know they had to take artery out my leg, put it in this joint. And uh, I hear him talking about it. Bumble was like, I think we can save it. No, we can't. We'll, uh, all kind of shit. Like I mean, I'm, mind you, I'm woke, but I got the shit in my mouth, so I can't dog right. And then I remember the book I read when I was you know in jail when I, you know because I had just got out of adult prison like two years ago about Helen Keller when she wanted to talk. She used to write. Write it in somebody's hand, like the letters. So I was trying to feel for who was next to me. I think it was my sister, right, right in her hand. And I remember the first thing I said, yo, get me some ice. My mouth dry as shit. And what they talk about my arm, man. I wanted to cut this joint off. I mean, but anyway, I started getting better, you know, fast, by grace of God or whatever. And uh, just imagine, you was, I was like, you know, I just got out of the army, so I was in shape. I was probably 165, slum young boy, but I was in shape. I was 110. I knocked, it knocked 55 pounds on me, man. I mean, so the big thing was insecurities. Cause I got hit by my, 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 by my bladder, so my dick ain't work. I mean, cause nerves and shit, like you know, so it'll work sometimes, sometimes, you know. But my my mind frame was I'm killing niggas, uh, you know. So it wasn't even that I didn't even need it. I'm going to prison. I mean, cause it was like, damn, here I go. I was this close to you know making it out the hood, and it, you get sucked right back in. I mean, then I go to the penitentiary, you know, I'm in the wheelchair. It's just like one of one of the times you give up. You know I mean, you give up. I ain't the type of boy that can kill myself. I ain't got that much heart. <laughs> I mean, but if I did, that would have been the time I would have did it. You know what I mean? But uh, it was like, then, you know, I got cool with one of my doctors, Dr. Ramsey. You know what I mean? Because he seen me. I was coming to, you know, I had nine operations after that. I always came by myself. You know what I mean? Nobody never was with me. He's like, yo, you don't got no, like, I got fam you know, I, people that's in my family, but I don't have family. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, you know what I mean? He he, he was trying to give me the uh, disability. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I was like, bad off I mean but you know, I went down there they told me no so I left and never came back you know kid you you don't know about that type of shit but I hit the block you know what I'm saying shot up and all that I mean it's just that's just, just, just how the streets go anyway you know what I mean but he's like I, at the time I didn't know that you know because I looked at myself as a grown old head, even though I was only 18 you know he was an older man so he probably looked at me as a kid like this nigga out here man you know because I got locked up a couple times while I was right before I was supposed to have some surgeries sometimes I mean, he's like, yo, man, you got to get your life together, man. <laughs> I said, man, I'm trying, man. You know, you only can do what you can work with, what you got to work with, you know what I mean? But I always be thinking, like, just imagine, you know, I've been in prison, a lot of different prisons, met a lot of people. I know some good dudes in prison, man. Good dudes, man. You know what I mean? In prison for selling drugs or somebody, some a way trying to get money. Just imagine the, the dudes that's in prison that didn't have to worry about trying to get money, that could just... Become the best dumb that they can be. I mean, could go to school without having to worry about eating. Could, could I mean, have a car without having to sell drugs to get it. I mean, it'll be so different. But it's made made for us to be preoccupied with survival, so we don't even get to become the best us. Cause right now, even no matter what, I could never be the best me that I could have been. Cause I've been through too much. I mean, just, I mean like you, how can you be the best you when you've been through so much? You mean, period, like, you can't, you know what I mean, so, but, you know, there's no excuses in life, but, you know what I mean, it just would be different if everything was on the even playing field, you know what I'm saying, but the thing I don't like is when you go to the front of these judges that have been to college and all that, how they talk to you, when you know if they was in your shoes, they wouldn't have made it, all right, I did my crime, give me my time, let me go ahead, they want to say, you would have scrounged that earth and you, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> give me my time, man, like, you, you, the time is enough, you don't need to, I don't need the words, because they don't really even matter, I mean, but, yeah, that's how that went, man, so, you know, at the end of the day, when you leave out your house, know that you sometimes, you might not make it back, I mean, straight up, don't take this life for granted, man, you only get one, I mean, and a lot of people take it for granted, I mean, see me, I got extra time, cause I, I mean I know I was supposed to die that day. I mean not supposed to, but you know the chances. Even my doctor said he said you had a five percent chance of living out of a hundred. Five, he said I never seen nobody come five. He said he said when you in a surgery like in a, in a uh, ER, they got a box they put you your clothes in when you die. He said yo we every put as soon as you came in we put your clothes in the box. We knew you was gonna die. I mean, <laughs> he said yo he said your shit is like a miracle for real. Then the crazy part about that, three years later I was signed. Well, not even three years, two years and a half. Signed to Rockefeller, two years and a half later. So, never give up, man. You never know. 
might give up the day before you about to become a billionaire. And you would never know you was going to be a billionaire. Keep fighting it. Keep being a better you. Peace.